almost every known way to extract rare earths from their mineral concentrates means that thorium just literally drops out like a rock and you have it. So while you're meeting the world's uh, rare earth demands, the thorium is free. So it's going to be the most valuable commodity in the world with almost no value. The Mountain Pass was originally closed uh, according to CEO Mark Smith because of the EPA in the state of California and some thorium that came out of a ruptured tailings pipe. So the thorium represents this unknown, unlimited liability to to rare earth production and so it plays into the hands of China. First, China provided rare earth elements very cheaply to everybody in the world by their cheap labor, lack of enforceable environmental regulation, and their appreciated currency. Essentially consolidate control the rare earth market. And then they said, well, you know, now all of you are coming to our door to buy our rare earths. We don't want to sell the raw material anymore. Our manufacturers can buy it cheaper than your manufacturers. They impose a huge export tax on rare earth elements, and so one had a choice to accept a huge tax and increase in the price of the product, or to relocate factory into mainland China and buy rare earth elements on a local market without tax. It's a strategy, it, it, and it's working pretty well. Manufacturers which use rare earth elements in their products located their manufacturing base inside China. The jobs in manufacturing transferred from United States and Western Europe into the Chinese mainland. They've moved all the way up the value chain and are actually able to leverage their position into capturing other countries' IP. If Toyota really wants to build a, a million battery packs, in the end, uh, if they don't find a solution to the heavy rare earth problem, they'll be building them inside China. So what we need to be able to do is let another entity take that thorium to develop uses and in markets including energy. So let's say for example you had a single rare earth refinery creating about 20,000 tons of heavy rare earths a year. On current consumption that's about 130 percent of domestic consumption for rare earths. It automatically undermines China's advantage. Now there's two places on the planet earth where you have a guaranteed supply of heavy rare earths. What can your country leverage that into? This is the fulcrum you need to get back into the the world economy as a manufacturer, value-added producer. On another note, you would produce enough thorium, which would historically have been dumped into tailings lakes, to provide power through the entire Western Hemisphere. And I've been told in every single presentation that's an understatement. If we can convince our government to step up to the responsibility of dealing with the rare earth issue, which means dealing with the thorium issue, put ourselves on the path for a new era in U.S. economic growth and a path towards total energy independence. The Chinese, who apparently have had a more far-sighted approach to thorium for quite some time than we have, I have been told have been stockpiling it for years as they mine for rare earths, since 99% of the rare earths that we use, including those, those, those magnets. Well, when those got mined, there was probably some thorium that came up with it that's probably sitting in some barrels over in China right now, waiting for Dr. Zhang to finish his experiments with thorium molten salt reactors and to start putting it to use. China has committed uh, the equivalent of a, a billion dollars U.S., which by the way is roughly the calculations that John and I and others have come up with for the cost of actually developing your first units. So going all the way through IP to fully constructed operational units. This is the most important thing that's going to happen in the next 24 months, and whoever gets that is essentially going to control the destiny and the rollout of energy for the foreseeable future. We believe that the United States should be leading that. I can assure you the plan includes every single partner that we can bring into this worldwide, our friends in Canada, our friends in Brazil, our friends in Europe. If developed outside the United States, the NRC is facing absolutely very real problems in terms of credibility. You can't have the world move on without you with what, for all practical and measurable purposes, is a safer form of energy. Why are we sustaining an energy system that was the byproduct of the Cold War? I think if we could all just kind of go back in time, I'll bet you that, that all of Europe felt like America was today's China. What we did to the Europeans coming out of the First World War and the Second World War, buying up all the globe's resources and becoming the industrial producer of everything felt very similar. But remember, we were about 130 million people back then. They're 1.3 billion. They need it. They need the power. Uh, they, they, need to, uh, they need to be able to uh, realize the promise of thorium. But I'd also like to see us succeed, you know. 
I mean, we were working on this stuff a long time ago. We made great progress on it. We set it down in 1974 for kind of dumb reasons, and I think it's high time that we, uh, we pick that thread back up again. <laughs>